On today's episode of Sound Iron Sessions, we're going to be composing a cue around an improvised acoustic guitar performance to create a moody and emotional piece, so stick around. <laughs> Hey, how's it going everybody? This is Craig Peters here from Sound Iron, and on today's episode of Sound Iron Sessions, we're going to be looking at a track that I wrote that was all based around an improvised acoustic guitar performance. Other than the acoustic guitar in this track, it mainly features sounds from Sonosphere's Four Direction, as well as some violin phrases from Hyperion Strings solo violins. This track was inspired by movie soundtracks like Arctic, which was composed by Joe Trapanese, as well as video game scores like The Long Dark, which was composed by Chris Velasco. The thing about these two scores that I really took inspiration from is they both have a very somber, powerful, and emotional feel. So I wasn't necessarily trying to write a track exactly like these scores, but what I wanted to do was more or less channel the imagery and feeling of sadness and desperation and what it would be like to try and survive in these types of harsh conditions and, you know, the feeling of never knowing if you're going to see your friends or family again. So before we get down to it and start breaking down this track, I want to encourage you to subscribe to the Sound Iron YouTube channel. This is a great way to stay up to date on all future walkthroughs, composing videos, videos like these, as well as interviews, and much more. So if you want to stay up to date on everything we got going on, because we got a lot of new exciting things coming out this year, so it's a great way to stay up to date. And make sure you hit the notification bell so you can get notified every time we post a new video. Alright, so now let's go ahead and play through the track, and then we'll go track by track, and I'll break it down and show you how I piece the whole thing together, some of the different effects and ways that I mixed it, and so forth. So, let's have a listen. So with this track, it was all based around this acoustic guitar performance, and I wanted this to basically be like the heart of the track and have everything else kind of play around it. So when I was first working on this track, I was just kind of doing some different like major third and minor third intervals and just kind of incorporating some other open notes. It has like a very somber sound, um, very sort of Opeth inspired. They do a lot of these kind of chords like these. these kind of open minor chords. So after I was playing around with some of the chords and ideas, I just improvised a one take. I just didn't want it to sound edited or perfect in any way. I really wanted it to have all of those kind of natural imperfections. Basically just hit record and this is what we have I'm going to go ahead and solo this so you can listen to just the acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. 
And you can hear I also have some reverb on there as well just to kind of give it that more ambient atmospheric sound. So after I recorded this and put some effects on it and kind of set the mood for how I wanted it to go, I went and laid out the chords on this chord track and then basically just from there just started adding on some instruments from Sound of Spheres 4. One thing I want to mention about this cue is there's not a lot of tracks in it. It's very minimal and that was on purpose. I didn't want it to have way too many tracks or too many things going on. You know, when you think about this kind of track and sort of the inspiration behind it, it's very desolate. And if you were stranded somewhere, you wouldn't have a lot of things to utilize. So with this cue, I really wanted to approach it in the same minimalistic way and really just have the tracks that are there be the important parts that really kind of bring out that emotional and desperation vibe and, and that sound. So this first track that I used to basically set the tone along with the acoustic guitar is this patch from Sonosphere's Four Direction. And within this category, there's multiple different drop downs for guitars, mallets, pianos. So for this first one, I'm utilizing a sound from the strings category, and I have this preset down here called Breeze. So it sounds like this. So with this patch, you can really hear it has this icy, cold sound, and a lot of these sounds are very inspiring and Pretty much, I could probably write this track in multiple different ways using different sounds from this library, but I wanted this one to act as more of just kind of like a tone setter and really bringing in the atmosphere and utilizing some of the sound design string sounds that Blake Ewing did for this, for this library. So let me go ahead and play you this sound with the acoustic guitar. just to pretty much outline the different notes and chords of the acoustic guitar. And then after that, the next thing that you hear in this track are these really beautiful and expressive violin phrases that come with the Hyperion string solo violins and I'm utilizing the A-sharp dark 70 BPM phrases. This track is not in A-sharp, but what I did is right here in this little pitch wheel on the library, you can actually pitch this down up or down depending on whatever your track is. So if let's say you have one of these phrases that work, but it's just a half step away from the key that you're working in, you just pitch it down and it'll fit. So that's what I did with this. And one thing I want to mention is that these phrases were naturally recorded at 70 BPM. I'm not using any sync functions, it's all playing back naturally. And this track is actually at 60 BPM, but since this track doesn't really have too much of like a steady pulse or anything like that, it's very free flowing and kind of random and you don't really have like a structured tempo, it works pretty well over it. So now let's go ahead and listen to the acoustic guitar the Strings Breeze drone track, and then the violins. And I really love the sound of these phrases. They're very expressive and they're all recorded phrases. So for this, they just really worked for that kind of slow and delicate and very bleak and somber vibe. Let's go ahead and listen to one of the other phrases. And you can hear the second phrase is similar to the first one, but it's cool because this one sort of goes in a little bit of a direction, a different direction towards the end. So if you listen to this first one, Next one. So I really like how the second phrase plays off of the first phrase. It really keeps with the continuity of the melodic themes and really works well, especially because a lot of these phrases are modular. You can piece them together and really 
you know, craft your own melodic phrases or melodic motifs. So I thought that really played off nicely for this. And then the next sound you're going to hear in this track is utilizing this Vox category from Sonospheres 4. And it's using this preset called Cavern. And I really like the way that this sounded. And I actually learned the mod wheel to the volume and I'm automating it throughout the track. So if we go ahead and just solo this, you can hear what's going on. And then let's go ahead and listen to it all together. I just love the way that these sound. They sound so delicate and very fragile and just really, really helps, I think, convey that emotional feeling. So Sonospheres 4 Direction comes with a lot of really inspiring felt piano sounds and I thought this would be a great track to include that on because I just love the sound of a felt piano and a lot of these, like I said, conjure those feelings of, you know, icy, tundra-esque kind of sounds and it just kind of puts you in that place of being out in, you know, in the snow or very icy conditions. So I really like how this sounds, these, uh, these, uh, piano sounds. This is using the Flames preset from the piano category in Sonospheres 4 Direction. So you can hear that it's felt piano, but there's also some sound design ambiences in, in the background. Now let's go to measure six where the piano comes into the track. So you can see with this track, there's nothing that's quantized. Everything was played in and that was very intentional. I wanted it to have a very real and emotional and visceral sound and everything plays off of each other in, in a way that just feels very natural, um, especially with playing off of the acoustic guitar or playing off the violin phrases and that sort of thing. So the last track that utilizes sounds from Sonospheres 4 Direction are these string arcs from Sonospheres 4. And I really love how these sound. They have such, uh, going back to that icy, icy kind of inspirational sound. I just love the way they sound. They have that very sort of delicate flotando sound, but in a different way. It just has this very on the verge of breaking and just really helps, I think, convey that kind of emotional somber vibe.
and I just love these kind of sounds. I could play on this patch all day, but we ain't got time for that. We got to break down this track. So uh, after that, we pretty much are just using this just to kind of aid along with the track. So you can see where this comes in, there's not as many violin phrases. So I didn't want these strings to clash too much with the violin phrases. So there is one here, but it kind of is played towards like the last half of, of this part right here. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna solo this with the, with the violin phrases so you can hear how it sounds. I really like how those two blend together. And then there's some more of the string arcs that come in. Bring in these string breezes. So with this track and going back to the whole minimalistic approach, it was really about trying to say a lot with a little and Sonospheres 4 definitely helps with that because these sounds are so inspiring and so evolving texturally and it really just helps kind of get a lot done with just very minimal effort. Yeah, so this track was a lot of fun to work on because I just really wanted to make a piece of music that sort of put myself into that space going back to like the whole movies like Arctic where you know if you were stranded somewhere kind of trying to convey that emotional feeling so at least I, you know that's what I was going for so let me know in the comments what you guys think and uh, now so let's go ahead and start talking about some of the mixing mastering and EQ stuff that I did for this track All right, so since this track started with acoustic guitar, let's go ahead and start checking out the acoustic guitar and how I processed it. So I'm going to go ahead and solo this out and show you a little bit of what I did to EQ the, the track and kind of getting it sounding the way I wanted. So I went and loaded up Pro Q3. This is from FabFilter, and this is how it sounds without. I have some EQ and compression. I'm going to go ahead and turn these off. I also have some sends here as well. I'm going to turn these off. So let's go ahead and check this out. So you can hear by the sounds of the acoustic guitar, it has a very dry sound. This room is treated well enough to where everything sounds pretty dry when recording any types of acoustic instruments. So that's why right after this, I pretty much opted to throw in some verb and, and some other effects. Uh, for anyone who's wondering, I actually recorded this acoustic guitar with a TLM-102. Great sounding condenser mic and worked really well with capturing the sounds and nuances of the guitar. So after that I went and turned on some vintage verb and I have this on a send on an effects track and this is how it sounds with the reverb. And then I also have some black hole on here as well. Just for another extra little bit of atmosphere and and just adding a little bit more of that sort of ethereal sound to the guitar. So before I go and turn these back on, I want to go ahead and show how the acoustic guitar sounds with and without the processing. And this was based off of a preset in FabFilter Q3, the Pro Q3, which is this like mud removal. And then I just kind of added a little bit of a high shelf up here just to add a little bit of uh, brightness to the guitar. So without it, it sounds like this. And then with. And you can see there's also some dynamic EQ going on. So then after that I'm using some compression and this is from the Pro C2 from FabFilter as well. And with this I'm just pretty much trying to smooth out any sort of transients, you know, anything that's a little bit too loud or a little bit too quiet, kind of just, you know, smoothing it out and just really making it sound a lot more even. So with the EQ and the compression, sounds like this. And then with the reverb and black hole.
And then for the strings breathes drone sound, I'm running it through the Valhalla Shimmer. And this just helps really add this nice, beautiful ambience. Something different than the Black Hole and Vintage Verb. So I wanted to, you know, combine some different, more ethereal and dreamy kind of reverbs and effects. So sounds like this. And then if I bypass it. You know, these sounds are sound designed and have some effects on them, but I wanted to use this to just make it shine a little bit more. And then for these vocal effects, I'm using some Vintage Verb and Black Hole on this as well. So you can hear it just adds this nice bit of like flowy tail to the track. And then for the piano with the Flame preset, I'm using some Vintage Verb, Black Hole, as well as some Stereo Delay. So let's go ahead and listen to that. You can hear a little bit of that stereo delay on the end. It's very tucked away. It's not really a lot of delay up front, but very dialed back in the mix. And then for these first violin phrases, I have some vintage verb and black hole on this as well. So if we turn these off, this is how it sounds. these were recorded in a very dry environment so it's really nice to be able to place these in any sort of space that you want so when I go ahead and turn these on and just go ahead and solo these other instruments this is what we get you know not a lot just a little bit just to help sort of place it in that space so for the mastering of this track it's pretty much what you've seen on other Sound Iron sessions. I just kind of tweak stuff here and there. Usually what I'll do is I'll tweak the, the bus compression and just dial it to where it's usually around between zero and four. Uh, I also have some virtual tape on here as well as some Pro Key 3. Uh, if you want to see a little bit more in depth on this, you can check out some other previous Sound Iron sessions. One thing I did do differently on this track is I'm using this plugin called Razor and this is new to Cubase 12. I was just kind of playing around with some of the different presets and dialing stuff around and I really like how it sounds and I'm using this also in combination with Flatline and this is another plugin that you've seen commonly on Sound Iron Sessions. I really like it. It's just this really awesome uh, mastering clipper and it just sounds great. So I'm using this just a little bit. I don't really have the threshold very high so if, if I turn this off and this off, this is how it sounds. So I'm going to go ahead and engage Flatline. So you hear it's boosting the level a bit. And now I'm going to go ahead and increase Razor. So you can see with the combination of Flatline and Razor, this is how I'm achieving my overall final mastering volume with the track. All right, so that about wraps up this Sound Iron session. I want to thank you all so much for watching. If you like these types of videos, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel to see more videos like these, as well as walkthroughs and composing videos, interviews, podcasts, and much more. So until next time, I want to say thank you so much again for watching, and we will see you in the next one. Take care.